Churchill tanks on the road from Pichon, striking east to Caruan and Sous. The First Army's attack coinciding with the Eighth Army's drive up north to Sfax. This was the position in the early part of April, with prisoners coming in as our armies advanced. American and French troops also played a vital part in these battles. Some of these prisoners had only been in Tunisia 10 days. Engineers once again worked like heroes to facilitate the advance of the forward units. Overhead on all sectors, the RAF and Allied Air Forces gave strong support, much appreciated by the men on the ground. A Sherman tank in action with the 8th Army on the drive to Sfax. Bridges had been blown up by the retreating enemy, but the great thrust forward scarcely paused. railway station shows painful evidence of the steps we had taken to hinder German transport. And on the morning of the 9th of April, the 8th Army entered Sfax. The joy among all the inhabitants tells only too plainly of their relief that the Germans had been driven out. Great day for Sfax and for British, American and French troops whose flags now flew proudly side by side. General Montgomery here as always had a great reception. The 8th Army commander received a flying fortress as a gift from the Americans, the payment of his winning bet on the date he would enter Sfax. A great gesture. But here's hoping that some of the silly season publicity given to a very great man will now die down. Back at Caruan is an example of the deadly machine gun nests in the hills that guard Tunis and Bizerta. They explain the hard and slow going of our armies in the last lap in Africa. But here is evidence of the all-conquering strides our forces have already made. Hard going but harder still for Germans and Italians, and theirs is the losing end of the battle. Here at Jebel El Utia, our infantry are advancing again for the attack on Sugarloaf Hill. And again, fresh batches of prisoners are being sent off to the rear, nearly all German. But in this sector, there are also some Austrians. They were Austrian trenches in which our men took cover. Our tanks have wrought great havoc among the enemy guns, and it was here that two great British armies met again. The first and the eighth. And with them, the French, commanded by the valiant General Leclerc, whose men are keeping alive the flickering flame of France's glory. And here, another column is rolling forward to Cairo Arm, taken by our forces a few days after the fall of Sfax. One piece of evidence for those who still doubt the stories of Nazi oppression. Jews are now able to remove the Star of David, which they must wear wherever Germans rule. And these are the tanks which toured Britain during the Tanks Week campaign. So ended another stage in the Battle of Tunisia. General Montgomery in conference with General Alexander, preparing the next great push on to Tunis.